So, I have a video response uh, that's going to take down my spurious reasoning, and I thought we would do a live response. I stopped it a little bit in because after hearing it, I thought, oh, I've got to do this live. I don't actually know what the argument is yet. So let's get to it. I don't have a cigarette, but I'd like to be dramatic. Hi, everybody. Um, I was going to make this video. Uh, Best I got. I'm just deciding to make it. I've tried, I don't know, maybe six or seven times. Uh, but it's in direct response to uh, in Integral Math's uh, series I was the of turkey. gun ownership. I find it distressing to have to uh, bring this up. Speaking of distressing. Uh, with Integral Math, uh, because I've come to expect a higher level of um, perspicacity or uh, of analysis, I suppose, from in Integral Math's videos. Uh, and I know that he was a police officer, so I know that um, this issue is probably a bit too close for him to see. Right, because uh, I'm really big about that whole, if my feelings are one thing, then that's what I'm going to argue for. Let's not pay attention to all the times where I argue in opposition to what my feelings are. But I'm sure you're right. Let's get to it. <clears throat> exactly what, what he's saying now um you know i love this he, right in the series of videos which i'll link to in the low bar he and i'm gonna link to uh, schrodinger's rape rapist that's where i stopped listening the first time so i thought well anything that mentions this and then schrodinger's rapist i have to do a live response to so uh the the well has been sufficiently poisoned let's see if we can get to the response shall we see why. Good. In the videos that he's made, he's made a probabilistic ar argument for gun ownership. That is to say that the probability that he will encounter is non-zero. Or he will find himself in need of having a pistol is, well, that it exists. Yeah, non-zero. Um, he recognizes that it's not... Um, a very high likelihood. Anyway. Well, let's not say all that. Let's not forget the simple fact that I've argued several times <clears throat> that with respect to me, the probability is one because it has in fact happened to me. So let's not let that little trivial matter interfere with what I'm sure is otherwise going to be a perfectly cromulent argument. He also recognizes that a gun is not a panacea and will not make him safe. Um, but no, 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 no. I have never conceded that. I have said there are no guarantees and that having a firearm is not a magical shield that immunizes me from all harm. These are completely, completely different claims. The fact I'm alive today is because I had a firearm and body armor, incidentally. Body armor helped a little bit, I have to say. So let's not get to a... Uh, this nonsense about how I haven't said it won't make me safe, or that it, I said it doesn't make me feel safe. It's not some artificial sense of security, because I fully recognize that the fact I have a firearm does not immunize me from all harm that could befall me. The number of dead people with guns in their hands is a good clue about that. So... The extent to which you've said my analysis is deficient so far is the extent to which you've misrepresented what I have said. But, let's continue. He <clears throat> persists in making the argument that merely the, the mere possibility, however theoretical... Um, Again, I'm alive right now, so it's not just theoretical. ...of something happening is just justification or, in this case, carrying a pistol or owning a pistol, um, is sufficient. Okay, since I, I haven't spelled this out for people, I don't blame you for this. But, um, 
It may come as a surprise for you to learn, but if you go around, I don't know, imprisoning people's relatives or even the people themselves, sometimes they hold grudges. And seeing as how I live in an area where I've done this, from time to time I run into relatives of people I've arrested or the people themselves. And again, they're not always that happy to see me. Granted, this is ha happening a lot less these days because as time goes on, you know, well, I don't know, it just happens less. But I remember I was at the bank one day. I was off duty, minding my own business, you know, going there to get my own money, not robbing the place. And you know when you're standing there at like the, the counter, you have like the teller. It was, you know, wasn't a great day for her. Hair was all jacked up. But if you look above that, they usually have um, security cameras and monitors, so that way you know that you're on the television. Well, I'm not, I, I'm unaware of that many stories of people going up to the teller and being robbed by the teller. But I am aware that the, <laughs> it doesn't always happen the same way in reverse, that some people who come up to the teller do try to rob them. So I pay attention to the monitors to see what's going on behind me, you know, because I'm cool that way. And I recognized a gentleman who was in the bank, and then he walked over and grabbed the Employee of the Month award off of someone's desk. Because this, well, it looked like glass, but it actually turned out to be plastic. And he picked it up and started walking in my direction. And the next thing he knows is he's being greeted with my handy little Glock. And I gave him a series of options, none of which entailed him not going to jail, but for the county morgue. Because the only other option was uh, to drop it and get on the ground, or, you know, I would shoot him in the head. But, I'm sure you know the details of my life, so let's let you finish telling me all the fuck about what it's like to be me. For him to own a pistol. And he says, well, you know, everybody wears seatbelts, right? You I didn't say, say everybody wears seatbelts. Well, today's going to be the day, so to I said, of the people who do, people don't put them out on saying, you know, today's the day. Because if you thought that, that, you know, today's the day I'm really going to need it. You'd probably be like, you know, I'm going to stay home, because, well, shit, I know I'm going to be in a car crash today. I can just avoid it by not going home, or I could take another route. We don't know the future. Yeah, I'm going to wear a seatbelt. No, you do it irrespective <laughs> of whether or not you uh, know you're going to die. Uh, you know you're going to be in a car accident. You put it on. Anyway, the thing of it is that he's comparing apples and oranges. Um... Car accidents do happen every day. It's true. Uh, I know that this argument that he's making... it Someone gets shot every day. Um, In fact, I was going to do a video... Oops, a video I was going to do uh, last week on Friday. It was uh, about... It had the Mark Coates video and some other things. So I was going to do it with respect to some, some unrelated issue. But I decided not to do it that day because two police officers had been shot, one of whom died. Uh, before she died, incidentally, she did manage to shoot her, her killer. So that was awfully convenient for her. They were serving a warrant, I believe, for drug possession. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't good timing. But then I noticed on the news that the shooting had happened at the school. And I thought, well, I'll just put this off for a little bit anyway. Although I was going to do it because the police officer had been, killed, had been killed that day. Although, I will point out that I can only do that for so many days in a row. Because every few days, a police officer is murdered at work. Although, I will point out that uh, it used to be the case that the leading cause of death for police officers was being shot to death. That's no longer true, much like in the general population. It's now motor vehicle collisions that kill most of them. In the 70s, it used to be a couple of hundred a year, about one every 18 hours died. And now, it, in, in a, from gunfire. But now, it's one every few days, down to about 40. Uh, I think we're at 41 this, oh, wait. I have to add one of that because one got killed today. A police officer was shot to death. So, I, and I don't know about the intervening days, but that's about right. So, it's about 42, I think, right now, and it's at 49 or 50 uh, I haven't checked in a few days, so at least 49 have died in car crashes this year. Now, some people say, well, body armor helps. You're right, it does. It, it is really useful to have some barrier between you and the bullets that uh, would otherwise tear into your very uh, not-resistant flesh.
that does help a tremendous amount. But the introduction of body armor is not the significant reduction in deaths of police officers because many years after body armor had been introduced and was being required by departments, you were still getting 150, 170 officers killed a year. What happened is video cameras came around and we got to start watching the last moments of these officers' lives and seeing what they did that but for having done that, they could have likely survived, survived being shot to death. And the review of that and the, the alteration of strategies on how we approach, how, how we angle our simple things that you won't notice just from talking to police officers, but how they stand in relation to you is a direct result of watching hundreds of police officers be murdered. How we now shoot is a result of that. All kinds of things go into it. So it's not the fact, and it's not, we're not being shot at less often. I say we, they aren't being shot at less often. And they're not being shot at by less deadly weaponry. The one thing that, that is decidedly making the advantage is now we know how it happens and we train officers so they know when it's about to happen. They can pay attention to the different kinds of cues that theretofore had been somewhat uh, opaque to us. And this, as much as anything else, even body armor, has accounted for the saving of a lot of police lives. But, I'm sure I'm just being spurious and specious here. Continue. Uh, one of the pieces of evidence that he brings forward, and he brings it forward for a slightly different purpose, but nevertheless, um, it's a piece of evidence that supports this idea that, well, it could happen. So, hey, is the, um, he offers two video clips he offers more than that, but two in particular. Uh, one of a state trooper, I think in South Carolina, that shoots a suspect uh, that he's pulled over. Mark he shoots Coates. him five times in the chest with a 357. Yeah. Basically a point blank range. Not basically a point blank range. Okay, this video is really bothered. I'm going to put it in right here. He didn't shoot him basically at point-blank range. He put three... Uh, actually, uh, I've been told that he put... Uh, they were uh, plus P rounds for uh, 38 ammunition, not Magnum rounds. But whatever it was he ultimately shot, I can't tell from the video. I don't know this from any official source. It's just what someone has told me. He didn't put them nearly at point-blank range. And he didn't put them nearly where they need to be. He put them in a circle this large over the guy's heart. The bullets just all missed everything important. Um, and the suspect doesn't die. But the suspect uses a 22 caliber pistol and kills the state trooper. Um, the concept that such an outlier event, such a black swan event, would justify gun ownership is laughable. Um, I didn't use it to justify gun ownership. I used it to point out in response to someone saying, how good would you be if you were shot in the heart or in the head? And I'm pointing out examples of when people have been shot in the heart and the head and lived long enough to kill the person who shot them. Because it's relevant to the question I was asked. I did not say that that thereby justifies owning or carrying a firearm. I responded to a particular claim, a particular request, actually, a question. My justification for my owning a firearm remains the same. Actually, it's even more general than that. I don't owe you a justification. I don't owe you a reason. There is a constitutional amendment that insists the right exists. And I don't owe anybody any explanation or justification to exert my rights. The fact that it exists and I'm entitled to it by law it's the only justification I require. I entertain these ideas that people throw at me because they're stupid and they need to be addressed. But the justification for why I, I 
do it is because I can. I don't, for instance, why am I having an argument? I don't owe anyone a justification. No one is entitled to an explanation for why I exercise my right to disagree with anyone else. I don't owe anyone an explanation for why, for instance, I might not want to, want to quarter troops. The fact that I can say no, and it's entitled to me by law, is the justification. No explanation required. I don't need to explain why I don't want my house searched. That it's my right to deny it is all the justification I need. Don't confuse my willingness to discuss things with people for that being some lame attempt or whatever to explain or to justify my action. For one, you're not sovereign over me. I don't need to excuse my behavior to you or anyone else. I do people the courtesy of responding to stupid and common arguments that get thrown about. So I might nuke the United States. Should I own a nuclear weapon? Yes, you know? because let me tell you, if I accidentally drop my firearm, that would totally kill the 100,000 people around me. Whew, can't tell you. You know, if like 100 people did that, you would, you would have firearm winter. I mean, have you heard of that? That is some deadly shit. Like, well, the sun would get completely blotted out. I mean, it, what, well, if you wait long enough, the sun just goes down and then it turns dark. But it's exactly the same. I'm sorry, you're accusing me of spurious arguments. You went from, well, just he owns a firearm to, well, I guess nuclear weapons. G -g 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 -g. My name's Gomer Pyle. Uh, the argument on its face is, well, specious. There's no other word for it. Um, there are. On that account, by that logic, you should wear a parachute in case a tornado sucks you up into the air. <laughs> <laughs> you must be kidding! It, well, if you think that the possibility there is <laughs> what it is, I don't know exactly where you live. Then, then you wear a parachute. Now, never mind the fact that <laughs> the way you want to respond to a tornado is not to be in, in the wind, so you know you want to be below it so you don't get sucked up. <laughs> this has got... You're poeing me, aren't you? This has got to be a joke. Okay. Parachute for tornadoes. <laughs> Check. It's 200 miles from where you started. You should wear a lightning rod on your back um, because people get struck by lightning. Do you know how lightning rods work? <laughs> you know, you can make it look like you're one of those trash picker uppers, except you need two of them so that way you always have it grounded as you're walking. Uh, snow skis, really. You know, those little poles that you go snow skiing with. You just put your little lightning rod on the back. As for me, I, uh, well, I do this really strange thing when there's lightning outside. Instead of worrying about setting up my own personal lightning rod and making sure I have two grounds, so that way when I'm walking, once, you know, it's always grounded, I go inside. You should never cross the street. Because you can get run over by a car. You should never drive a car. Because Actually, more, more uh, on point here is, instead of just, you shouldn't cross the street, you should look both ways before you cross the street. See, one of the problems with people who are too liberal is that uh, they don't understand allocation of fault. They want to take it as, oh, you're blaming a victim. No, I'm not blaming a victim. However, um, the fact that this person's walking across the street without looking with blinders on probably not a winning strategy. It's not necessarily someone's fault that they're the victim of something. However, being in the complete right, if I'm a pedestrian, I have an absolute right at a crosswalk to walk out and cars are required by law to stop. Unfortunately, my absolute right under law to do that doesn't immunize me from the laws of physics. Being right and dead are not mutually exclusive events. And the fact that I keep pointing out that my carrying a firearm doesn't mean that I will survive some encounter where I'd have to use it. In fact, I've pointed out that I could easily be the person who doesn't survive just because of the, na the nature of how uh, gun battles go. 
However, that doesn't mean that I'm willing to pretend as though everyone dives immediately and can't resist an attack, because that's simply not the case. And I like to prepare by not retarding my ability to respond by making sure that I don't have available the tools by which to respond, presuming that the situation I find myself in is one that hasn't instantly killed me, which could well be the case. Although, I do point out, inconvenient as it is, I'm still alive. Okay, I'm about done with this. You could be in a car accident. Um, you should never take a shower, because you could <laughs> slip and fall in the shower. All these highly improbable things. Or, you could put on those little mats down that improves your traction. Just, you know, like, uh... They do for the elderly po folks, and you know you can put in a little railing to hold on to. So, your way is one option, but you know, I can smell you a mile off. This can happen to you. We don't live our lives around them. I don't live my life around carrying a firearm. Okay. In fact, uh, if you look at all of my videos, only until this week have I even mentioned, I think. Uh, may maybe I've missed mentioned it in passing. It's not a lifestyle choice any more than having a smoke detector is a lifestyle choice, or wearing a seatbelt is is a is some kind of a club to which one belongs, around which one structures one's life. It's simply one tool among many that I have in my life for various purposes. Yeah, I'm kind of done done with this. Uh, you you have to be poeing me. You cannot be serious. Have a great day.